everyone, my name is Ashley Wild and welcome to my channel, Ashley's Wild Life. <laughs> Today, Shana's here with me to talk about stereotypes. Let's start with what a stereotype is. It's a generalization that you might hold about a group of people, especially a generalization that provides for a narrow view of that group of people. Common stereotypes are that women are bad drivers, Asian people are good at math, and blondes are stupid. Now, obviously, these are generalizations. They can't apply to all individuals, but that doesn't stop people from holding holding these beliefs, and people are especially likely to hold stereotypical beliefs if they've never met a person who identifies with a certain group. But here are some of the reasons that one might get stereotyped. Gender, race, religion, sexual orientation, hair color, hair length, whether or not you have hair, body type, are you from the city or from the country? How much money does your family make? What does your family look like? Are your parents married? Were they ever married? Did they get divorced? What are your hobbies? Do you live in an apartment or do you live in a house? First question we're gonna answer is what stereotypes do you face most often? Something new that I've been facing recently is someone knows knowing that I have a girlfriend, they think, oh, well, you must be this way, you must be that way. In doing so, they reject the identity that I claim, which is pansexual, but that's often rejected because of a stereotype of, oh, well, you must be a lesbian, you must like all of these things. People tend to address it as, oh, you're dating a woman, you must be bi. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing that, totally. that you express, is that people say, oh, you must be bi, you must be bi. One big stereotype, and it's not really totally associated with any one identity, is that because I'm not the kind of person you might see every day, people think that I'm me. Like people think that I'm unfriendly or unapproachable, mostly just because they don't understand me. People say, oh, when I first met you, I was so intimidated by you. I practice yoga and for a long time, I have observed talk in the yoga community that bodies who practice yoga should be a certain way. So they should be very thin, very muscular. Something that I have had to learn and I've even checked myself on it a couple of times is that there's no one particular body that practices yoga yoga or that exercises or plays a sport or anything like that. Just because you don't have the stereotypical athletic body doesn't mean you're not able to do that kind of stuff. Some of the stereotypes that come along with polyamory is people assume that you are in it to have your cake and eat it too and you're polyamorous because you want to have a bunch of sex and you want to have as many partners as you can and have no consequences. The conversations that you have to have in polyamorous relationships are very challenging and it doesn't necessarily come with all of these different partners and you're having all of these different sexual experiences and, and just living freely with no regard for the other person. That's not it. Polyamory takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of communication. You know, speaking about that, there's a stereotype that we run into that is a monogamous stereotype. Oh yeah. I'm coming up on graduation, which means I'm probably gonna move from the town that I currently live in. And Shayna lives about an hour from me. And so there was a conversation that took place where she shared, you know, Ashley's graduating, she's gonna be thinking about moving. And the person was like, what do you mean? Like, she's not gonna move in with you? Like, what do you mean she's not gonna move in with you? Well, okay, aren't you gonna move with her? Or like, how are you, how are you gonna stay together if you don't move in together? Mm -hmm. So we did run into that one. The next question, question we want to tackle is how do you address stereotypes? So when you're up against a stereotype, you know, what do you do or say in that situation? Something that I find best to do, which is often one of the more difficult things, is to stop the person in that conversation and say, you know, that's actually not been my experience and this is why I don't agree with what you've just said. Part of how I try to address stereotypes is by living in a way that very clearly contradicts the content of a stereotype. Type. And that can be hard because some people feel like that that's extra energy that they shouldn't have to be putting forward. That the stereotype was sort of the problem and not the way they were behaving. And I agree with that. But I also have found that when I'm willing to give extra energy to break stereotypes, there tends to be an open door that otherwise might have been closed off to me because of those narrow beliefs. So I find if I'm willing to put in the elbow grease to break down the wall, that a lot of times that benefits me as well as hopefully educates that person. The last thing we want to talk about is how to avoid stereotypes. How do you get away from generalizations? Human beings are designed to categorize things. It's part of the reason that we get into so much trouble with difference between groups of people, and it's the reason that stereotypes exist. We get in the habit of making broad categories so that we can more easily understand the world. You're probably not going to be able to fully stop generalizations, 
A better approach is to think, oh, I just believed, I just perpetuated a stereotype. How can I maybe educate myself? How can I maybe learn more about this and hopefully stop myself from thinking in that way next time? It's also about having the courage to say something in a way that is invitational. You're not blaming that person for doing that. You're opening a conversation and a dialogue about, hey, what you said there kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Here's why. Have you ever thought about it that way? And at the same time, if you don't feel like you're in a position to be civil or to open a conversation with that person, it's okay to just remove yourself. Yeah. So basically there is this wealth of opportunities for you to be stereotyped based on any one of your identities or the experiences you've had in your life. But if you look at it another way, there's also a wealth of opportunities for us to begin to break down generalizations and understand the complexity of the individual experience. We hope you've learned a lot about stereotypes today and what you can do in order to challenge the status quo. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.